Hello, hello, worldwide sailors. Today, we're going to be covering the story of Noah and what happened to his family. So this is going to be a super exciting chapter. So I hope you got your floaties on. Hi, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Good. So how are you? We're going to be ready to start a lot of Genesis. I know that we talked yeah. about that this is going to take a lot of time to go over so many things that are happening in this chapter, including the story of Nephilims and the whole flood and killing off of humanity. So uh, I guess we're just going to jump right in. You know, I thought about, I thought maybe we should cancel this week because I had a uh, a beard accident. Oh, no. They, they, they shaved off my beard. So I kind of feel like Samson, <laughs> I've lost my powers, you know, because you get, you, if you study the Bible, you got to have a beard. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's just a rule. So <laughs> it was uh, the, the barber kind of had a misunderstanding and I wanted to trim the beard, but she shaved it all off. So, uh, oh no, <laughs> I feel, uh, I feel you do violated. Different. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very ashamed. And then you so, well, well, hopefully we can get through this without the beard. But, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, <Bye. laughs> it'll grow back, I guess. Actually, that way. would have been a perfect accident if we were in that chapter of Samson. Yeah, no, that's what it, that's what it feels like, you know. Although I didn't take an official uh, Nazarite vow, but it's I, I started growing the beard in the uh, in 2020 of Mar March of 2020 when when healthy people began uh, working from home. Yeah, <laughs> and that was so, probably uh, took a long, that took two years or three years, and now it's all off. I'm still working from home. <laughs> I don't mind it. I like that idea of working from home because I was struggling before that to go uh, yeah. to another. I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. But uh what it it is what it is to uh learning to uh embrace the tribulation. Yeah, I made the best of it. So who's gonna read today? So today we got the Nephilim <laughs> and the sons of God and all that stuff. So uh the first uh, couple first um was it eight verses of Genesis 6. I think you should read it. You do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, um, next one. And this is the modern English version. Is that right? Yeah. That's um, the okay. I'll read, try to read that one. All right. So Genesis 6. When, well, we'll see what this translation says. When men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair and took as wives any they chose. Well, we better stop there. That's uh, oh, That was verse 1 and 2. So there's a lot to unpack there. So what is going on? And um, men began to multiply. Daughters were born to them. That's pretty straightforward, right? There's a lot of people in the world now. And they had daughters. They also had sons, I guess, as well. But yes. um, now, the, now the sons of God, so the daughters of men are probably just uh, human females. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think at this point they're me. all human, right? That, so the when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born. So, okay. So that, I mean, I guess they always had daughters, but uh, so, so who are the sons of God? That's kind of the, uh, that's, the, you know, in, in fact, they call this uh, passage one through four, verses one through four, they say this is one of the most debated and um, difficult passages in the entire Old Testament, just so you know what we're getting into here. Yeah, I'm sure, because uh, it's not always clear on what they're meaning. But I think the sons of God, wouldn't that imply the angels that he already created? In, in the book of Job, three times this phrase is used, and there's one where it says, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them, so there's Job 1, and then Job 2, verse 1 says, uh, again, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came among them. And then Job 38, 7 says, when the morning stars sang together and all these sons of God shouted for joy. And that's talking about um, that when, during the creation of the world, so it's before the creation of human beings. Yeah. It's all angels, right? The the. Yeah, and also even in the New Testament, there's a phrase uh, talking about we will become sons of God. You know, so I think the term sons of God is talking about you know entities or you know angelic divine beings who are created directly by God, not the same way that God created Adam. Right, because Adam was created from the dust of the ground, and all living things on planet Earth are made from the dust of the ground, and. So uh, technically, we're not really sons and daughters 
physically of God, only in spirit. So this must be talking about a spiritual world that he yeah. already created in the heavens. Yeah, so he says the daughters of men and then they're sons of God. So there's kind of this contrast, right? So yeah. there's daughters of men would be human females, and they'd also be sons of men, would be human human uh, human males, sons of men. And then sons of God are contrasted with that. And there's there's basically four main views of this. And some people, um, well, we we can get into that later, I guess. But what do you Nephilim. think it is? What I mean? Well, I, th I think yeah. I mean, the sons of God. I mean, there's been uh, what? Well, more importantly, more impo before we get to before we get to that, what would what's the way to approach this? Is what do you think the writer had in mind and the original audience? What was the worldview? And this is we're talking something at least uh, three thousand, four thousand. 5,000 years old, you know, this passage here written a long time, probably written by, if it was written by Moses, but, there, you know, the story itself took place, uh, you know, many thousands of years ago, and um, what was the worldview back then? What what was the writer, what was the original, what is the writer well, trying to convey known, here? I think in those days, the people must have known the difference between who the sons of God were, like they're whole religious view of who God was and God was talking to them directly. And, you know, none of the stuff that we know today even existed. It, it would probably look completely different, even physically, like the whole planet would have looked different. People would have looked different. So they must have known right away, like who God was, because we just came off of Adam and Eve story and God was directly in that story. And now we're still in, you know, very early stage so yeah, and, Moses, and the writer. So yeah, so what did the, yeah? What was the uh, what were they thinking? What are they trying to convey? What do they mean by that? What do they mean by the phrase? And what did the original audience understand this to mean? What do you? I mean, that's I, the really I the question. Think they I think probably were already talking to that realm, like the angelic realm. You know, like the angels must have been around. Yeah, 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 they had these this uh, worldview, right? A supernatural yeah. worldview that has kind of been taken away from we've kind of lost that supernatural worldview these days. Yeah. So when a modern reader reads this, we think, "Oh, no way, that's impossible. That can't happen." Yeah. Right? Um, you know, because it says the sons of God took wives, human female wives. Well, that's my question. So, so that's the, the can they do that? Well, in uh in the in the Abraham story, we see uh, Abraham eating lunch with three angels. But do you do they think have a stomach? That the angels come in human form, like they're just like us. They possess. It happens. Yeah, that's what the Bible quality. tells us. Basically, that's what the Bible says. There's a lot of instances where angels appear on Earth, and uh, people don't recognize them. But see, here's angels. the problem. So, like, if they come in human form they're technically representing themselves as fully human. So all the bodily. Well, things, I don't know about that. Would be yeah. Human. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, that would kind of make sense, you know, um, but if they're eating food, have, uh, Nephilim children, if they were human body. So something is more than a human sounds like. Yeah. I mean, they would be, uh, if they come here, here and look, well, that's the thing is like, what are these angels originally? And um, how different are they from us? They may not be as different from us as we think. They live in a different place. Uh, they live above us in heaven. I think um, that's probably correct, because right in the beginning, didn't it say, we will make man in our image? Yeah. So that means yeah. likely yeah, we represent them already. We're created a little lower than the angels. There, yeah. I think there's, and God created all of us, right? And um I mean, they're almost maybe kind of like cousins or something, you know. So I think there's some similarities, at least similar enough, so that when they come to Earth, they take on this physical body that looks human. You know, it, it may not be exactly the same as ours, but and it may be a temporary situation, right? Well, if they come here and then they go again, they go away again, they go back to their original form. Yeah, because uh, the Nephilim. Because I have more questions about, like, even if they're in our representing of a human well, body. Yeah. You still can't, I don't know how angels and humans can, like, because Genesis 1 talks about everything in its own kind. 
like all the animals in their own kind, humans in their own kind. Well, keep in mind what these sons, of, what these, um, in fact, you know what the, um, yeah. So if, if they're angels, they, um, they did something they're not supposed to do. But how can they basically they broke the law with when they were they able to do it? Well, how are they able to eat food? I don't do they have a stomach? Do they go to the bathroom? Yeah, but they're able to like cross time <laughs> and space, right? So they're not just human. And the consequences of what they did with the women ended up resulting in these weird they're like shapeshifters. Yeah, they come they come in human form. I mean, the Bible is full of instances of them coming in human form. Yeah. So uh especially in Abraham, which comes up soon after this uh in, in Genesis, you know? but um, so if they, you know, and this this was the world. Well, here's the thing: this was the worldview they had back then. Every culture in the world, um, even today, they have these ancient stories of angelic beings coming to Earth, mating with human females. Um, so I believe that this w this was the intention of the writer to say that these were angels mating with humans you know what i mean and then later on some people thought well maybe that's not what it really says it, it means uh the descendants of seth the righteous sons okay. of seth but the problem with that view is not too many people really believe that anymore in, in terms of yeah. uh, you know scholars it's fallen out of favor and um the problem with that is then why are they doing this thing they're not supposed to be doing and yeah why would that create either that because flame? It, it does. It wouldn't make sense if it was just Seth's descendants to go into this supernatural story because this entire book yeah. is very supernatural. So we went from God creating everything to people on Earth sinning and causing all the curse upon the planet, and now we're into the supernatural world that nobody would ever believe unless it's written down. I think it is meant to be a separation of angels with man but then the yeah, next verse yeah. doesn't make any sense to go along well, okay verse three yeah verse three then the lord said my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh his day shall be 120 years that does seem a little bit out of place it is yeah um, but there must be a reason for it and there's a lot of debate does that mean the lifespan of human beings will be 120 years however people did continue to live longer than that for a while so maybe it just progressively eventually the lifespan shortened to that or did it mean um did it mean a, it, the flood would come 120 years later you know what i mean there's kind of two views on that um i, I, th I think it's talking about a lifespan to be honest like yeah. for me that but i haven't uh maybe if you broke out some charts somewhere they would show if if you can show that that's that the flood happened 120 years later then then that's uh that would be a good argument but uh but progressively lifespan has gotten shorter and shorter and now yeah yeah I and that is about the limit these days you know the yeah. 120 years is pretty much the limit and it doesn't have to be an exact thing sometimes when they throw numbers out in the bible it's not always a literal exact number you know and you um, see people aging a certain symmetrical way like the bell curve in a way where yeah. if it wasn't capped at 120 years, it wouldn't look like that. So we naturally have a certain time frame for babies, adults, seniors, and at the end of days. And if you think about it, really what's happening here is that it, it kind of makes the women look like innocent victims here. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily say it's... See, we don't have all the details in this passage, but it may imply that the... Uh, if you think about it, the women... If they're if their husbands and you know say a divine being an angel, that's kind of a, a major upgrade in status, and they have these uh, powerful children, these offspring. So it's possible. And and back then, the uh, most marriages were arranged marriages. Um, although it seems like here the sons of God just took the women, you know. But what if the women were willing participants? I and bet this just anything. kind of the, became the normal thing. Yeah, I I totally think the women were equally participants because they would have they probably looked good the sons of God right they probably were handsome they had super yeah. abilities and they were going to create these great men of that day so why not and they probably yeah. they be poor I'm pretty sure if they came from angelic realm they weren't going to pick the poor poverty level so they probably had means of being 
you know, the great men of that day, wealth wise too. So I think the women definitely thought that they were good contenders. Yeah. And even the family. So that, so in that sense, it kind of corrupted human beings. And that's, that's really what happened here is that it's not, we can't, we're, we're not just blaming these, these fallen angels, these rebellious angels for coming down and doing this. Um, although they are punished for this, we see there's, there's two references to this in the new Testament we can look at later, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a human component to this as well, that people are going along with this and that this, this corrupted humanity. I mean, people were pretty corrupt already from the, uh, the story so far up through Genesis five and, uh, people were now there was the, the, yeah, the line of Seth, it seems like those people were praying to God and offering sacrifices and they had faith and all this kind of stuff but it seems like now the uh when the fallen angels came to earth that fully corrupted people even more you know it's almost kind of like when satan entered the garden of eden you know um, yeah, corruption but, corruption that people were deceived and enticed by what he had to say genetically corrupt too i think this was a big story that is a big story in um noah that because of this angel human uh, breeding, that they corrupted all life genetically, and I th I think as we go on, it'll talk about like how wicked they were. And I know yeah. in the the book of is it book of Noah Enoch, uh, but uh, we we shouldn't mention that too much. See, that's the thing. Well, let's let's go to the next part here the nephilim if you want the verse four the nephilim now that is the hebrew word by the way that that's that's what it says in hebrew nephilim that's a transliteration and in the greek it says uh gigantes giants so the greek old testament says giants hebrew says nephilim um I like this word better because giant is confusing do they mean giant like super physically giant yeah or yeah they, that they, word is used almost uh, 40 times in the huh. in the septuagint in the old in the greek old testament and the greek old testament was the main bible that the new testament writers used and they quoted from it all the time so anyway let's let's read verse four so the nephilim were on the earth in those days okay those days what is those days when the which is verses one and two basically and also after that and also after that when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, which we're already told that happened, right? So, so uh, verses one and two. So he's kind of rehashing verses one and two that during the times of verses one and two, when more pe when the population began to increase, the uh, sons of God, which I believe, and it sounds like you believe as well, were angelic beings, angels, or uh, div divine beings, Elohim. Yeah. But this um, doesn't make any sense to me because I thought the whole <laughs> Nephilims were born out of the. Well, angels. let's let's finish it off. Let's finish the verse here. Yeah, that, I mean, it's it's a very confusing sentence. Actually, it's not very clear. Uh, came to the daughters of men. Are there before it they says they're all, they're on earth in those days and off and also after that when the sons of God when the angels came into the daughters of men the Nephilim were on there. no it could it could still be the offspring of of that union you know and that it's, it explains why they existed because they were the children of these angels and human females well it's the word after that Cause, Af cause, yeah because it kind of makes it seem like after those days yeah is that is it talking about the pre-flood world and then after the flood because the word nephilim shows up two more times after the flood in uh in the bible the word nephilim is used three times in the bible in the hebrew bible but yeah. the word giants is used like almost 40 times in the in the Greek Bible. The King James Version, it does say there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons came into, unto the daughters of men. Yeah. So, I mean, after that just means after that. It could be after, um, you know, after those yeah. days. It, it could still be talking about before the flood, you know. But we do see that the descendants... Um, let's finish the sentence first. Um, and they bore children to them. Yeah. So, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. And once again, once again, the mighty man is, uh, gigantes, the uh, giants in the Greek. So, so the, Gre the Greek says the giant, the giants were on earth in those, the giants were on the earth in those, those days 
these were the giants, you know, who were who were of old. So they use the, the Greek uses the same term, whereas the English a little bit different, and the Hebrew is a bit different as well. The Hebrew does not say Nephilim twice in the sentence, only the one time. The, the mighty men, the mighty men. But do is, mighty uh, men mean like Trump, or do they mean like a hundred feet tall Nephilim? Well, you don't have to put a hundred feet tall. Like, you know, I, I've met I've met uh, seven and eight foot tall people, and to <laughs> me, those were giants. Yeah, but I think later on somewhere it says they were men were like grasshoppers compared to them. So they must have yeah, been Yeah, that's numbers 13. So let's let's just go there now. Uh numbers 1333. I mean, if you can you, oh, you can go there or I could just read it. Silly. And that's where the um the spies are going into the land of Canaan, the promised land to check it out and they you know, the whole point of that story is that the people were cowards. They were afraid. They were not obeying God. They didn't have courage because they were afraid. So that's kind of the whole point of that story. I don't think the story itself is there to tell us about the giants too much, but uh, what was this the is part? Numbers 13, verse 33. And then, so it says, and there we saw the Nephilim. And again, the Hebrew word is Nephilim. It's used twice in this one verse. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, we, we oh see here now your version says giants, yeah. which is what the Greek says. That's what the Greek says. Uh, that the, my my English my English version says uh, Nephilim, and that's the, what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew says Nephilim. So okay. and there we saw the Nephilim. Okay, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim. Now yours says came from the giants, following the Greek, right? Uh -huh. So then, but the, the Hebrew is Nephilim again. So we got the Nephilim. They came from the Nephilim. Or their which kind of means their descendants. You will see other translations that say they're descendants of the Nephilim, and we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seem to to them. But think about the nature of the story: is that these people are portrayed as cowards, so they could be exaggerating a little bit, you know, mm. like oh, we're so afraid to go in this land. There's all these scary, big, tall people. Um, but it is kind of telling us that these people and these Anakim, the the sons of Anak. Uh, throughout throughout the Bible, Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, uh, the Kings, Chronicles. There's many many references to giants, giant in the Greek, gigantes, giants, about, and also okay. very tall people, very tall people mentioned throughout the Old Testament. Tall people, David and Goliath. Goliath yeah, was a giant. His brother, Og of Bashan. So there are giants all over the Bible. Yeah, I think they must have been very big people. Uh, and yeah, you know, I don't think we know exactly how tall they were, and, and I don't want to speculate on that. But like I said before, if you've ever seen an eight foot tall person, which I have, it's a, <laughs> it's a freaky experience. And there, that's a giant. I'm six foot three, so anyone taller than me is kind of a giant. I think I'm not used to looking up at people. I've met uh, mm -hmm. Harlem Globetrotters basketball players, and uh, these yeah, dudes are like seven know. seven feet tall. It's like whoa. You know, yeah. so it, it, they don't have to be a hundred feet tall because that just makes it harder to believe. Um, well, they, they maybe were, they're they, eight foot, ten foot, twelve foot. I don't think you know. Whatever, maybe they're not know. like super huge, but they were at yeah. least bigger. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, seven feet tall is huge. But the, I think later on, <laughs> when it's talking about like the violence that's going on, and if they're eight foot or twelve foot tall, I mean, twelve feet tall is twice as tall as I. Oh am. yeah, that's huge. I mean, that's you don't need to be any bigger than that to be <laughs> this massive giant. And Plus, to they're be still a, you know, making family, so maybe they weren't super super huge. Because regarding this topic, I've just I've come across so many different views on this topic and and you get a lot of logical fallacies and people say, oh there's no way giants could be 300 feet tall. Therefore the whole story is doesn't make <laughs> sense. You know what I mean? It's like no, we're not saying they're 300 feet tall or 30. We don't know. We don't know. Now there have been lots of you know there's there's been lots of bones excavated and they kind of hide them. And so that's a whole other story. But what is the Bible saying? What is the author trying to tell us? And what did the original audience understand this story to be? And I think there's the only the only possibility, in my opinion, is that the writers telling us, you know, what we're talking about. The angels came, had had children with human females, and these were very large and tall and powerful people who were different than other people, and they were kind of ty tyrannical. And um, and they corrupted they humanity. 
Yeah, they're not only genetically corrupted, but they came with more knowledge and skills and superpowers that we don't know. Yeah. It hasn't said so yet. But something and there's extra, yeah, there, yeah, 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 and 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 you get you get more of those kind of story. You get a lot of more of the details in extra biblical books, which also see. I don't want to do that in this podcast because people will say, "Oh, they 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 conflate these." Oh, the story of giants and the Nephilim. They think that comes from uh, the Book of Enoch, for example, uh, but it's mentioned in like dozens of extra bi biblical books, and uh, it's mentioned so many times throughout ancient literature. But yeah, I rather people people forget it's biblical. It, it is yeah. biblical. The nef the word Nephilim is used three times in the Bible. Because I've I've literally had people send me like these hate speech or hate oh. hate mail saying, <laughs> "Oh, Nephilim are not in the Bible." The Hebrew word Nephilim is in the Bible three times. Yeah, and all it does <laughs> is represent the mixing the the breed from human and angelic realm. So I, I have a passage. There's list a word with, for it. That's yeah. a pretty good word. I have seventy verses. And there's probably more, I guess, but although half of them are extra biblical. So there's about there's about 30 verses I have, maybe a couple dozen verses from the Bible that that are talking about this story, this Nephilim topic. Okay. Um, well, now let's go. Can I can I go to the can I jump around a little bit yeah. to the New Testament? Um, let's get these two verses because the, there's two verses and because because I've also I've I've heard people say oh but they're not talking about this in the New Testament therefore it can't be real you know it, it, at the end of the day people believe what they're comfortable with right um, but keep in mind this book is is an ancient book they had a different worldview than we do and we might not agree with what it says or understand what it says but it says what it says you know what I mean two Peter two four. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, For if God did not spare the angels that sinned, uh-oh, mm -hmm. the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, delivered them into chains of darkness to be kept for judgment. Now, let me just double-check something here. This might have the word abyss in there, but I think it's talking about the, the abyss. But the angels that sinned. So what is that talking about? What just happened in Genesis. It seems like it, yeah. I mean, it doesn't say specifically, but... What else would it well, be? They're making you know I mean? lives with human daughters, so that's a pretty big sin because God has already said everything to its own kind. I don't think he intended angels to make families with humans. No, no. They have power yeah. to go you know, cross dimensions because they don't live in our physical world, but they can come to our world. So They're almost they like aliens, huh? Yeah. Aliens. They're like aliens. Um, right. Now let's go to Jude. Four, Jude, uh, Jude has only one chapter. Jude, verse six. Jude was a brother of Jesus, by the way, as was James. Um, Jude and Jude, verse six. Yeah, just go down to verse six. Likewise, the this is very similar to what we just saw. The angels who did not keep their first domain or the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but forsook, forsook their own dwelling, he has kept in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, right? So he's talking about this guy in Jude, he's talking about this, you know, this transgression, oh, that people will, and then Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood. So, so what what is it? The angels left their place and they went somewhere else and they did something they're not supposed to do and now they're being punished but it's um, a serious punishment because we're just gonna god's gonna wipe out everybody except no one in his family and this is just like sodom and gomorrah and the surrounding cities in that manner gave themselves to immortal immorality and went after different flesh so that's just like the yeah. angels that kind of yeah yeah i think i think in sodom and gomorrah there was there were um Similar, I think, I, in my opinion, it's quite possible that this type of thing was happening again after the flood in Sodom and Gomorrah. However, however, um, this is always a, a big debate. Um, if we go back to Numbers thirty, Numbers thirteen thirty three, it says, "So this is after the flood, right? This is uh, uh, after the flood, and the, we saw the no, sons I of Anak who come." This, no, this, this is after the flood, for sure. Um, we saw... Wait. This is this, Numbers 13, yeah. 
No, this is after the flood. The flood, the flood ends in Genesis, uh, right. you know, nine. Yeah, this is way after the flood. Um, this, is, this is still a time of uh, Moses and there, there, Joshua. There, all these uh, wars. How and can stuff. that be, though? How can the, I thought the whole point <laughs> of the flood was to wipe out every Nephilim on the planet and just start over? With. Are, are we living in the full totality of the kingdom of God right now? The utopian paradise. The Garden oh. of Eden right now. So no, evil has not been exterminated. No, not evil, but I mean the the mix. No, 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 no. Hybrids. No, well, well, no, no, no. The 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 giants, Goliath. All the giants we just talked about, uh -huh. all throughout the Old Testament after the flood, after the flood. So this is kind of implying that angel offspring were still around after the it's, flood. Well, that's what it says. It says these are the descendants of the Nephilim. Hmm. You know, and you know, if so, is it the same? Are these descendants of the Nephilim before the flood, or are they descendants of Nephilim that came in after the flood? Did they create new Nephilim after the flood? It, it doesn't really tell us. Um, so there's different theories about how that could be possible. It's one of the ones well, I like is so I, I think either they either they uh, came and did it again, which is you know why wouldn't they really? Even though they were punished severely for doing that, as we all know, the threat of punishment doesn't always stop people from sinning, and these angels sinned. So sometimes um, they were just so te even the angels were tempted to sin despite the severe punishment that's quite possible after the flood but I think or the uh, say that somewhere that the angels were able to come back i'm not convinced it doesn't, yet no it doesn't say that. but there's a um the, the son of the uh, daughter of ham or no the wife of ham noah's so noah had um three sons on the ark and they had wives so the wife of uh ham is a culprit for possibly having contaminated bloodlines. That's that's a pretty good theory, I think. You know, but these are all theoretical. It, it doesn't really tell us. I don't even think the extra biblical language tells us how they could have survived. But I think it's quite possible. You know, they came back and, and they seem to be somewhat diluted afterwards. Um, and and also the Nephilim is not just you know the 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 thing about the Nephilim is they're not just giants. That was the that was the Greek word that was used. So it's quite possible the Nephilim uh, still exist, but they're not giants anymore, but they have a different uh, DNA. Well, if that's true, then, you know, all the weird things that happen in our day, some <laughs> of those could be the Nephilims if, you know, instead of just looking like humans, maybe they're more something else. There's a lot of people that you see, a lot of the, you know, the fame, the, well, the mighty men, right? The men of renown. Yeah. The f that's basically celebrity, right? A famous, powerful person. A lot of these famous, powerful people in the world today, they seem different. Yeah, they you know could what I mean. Power. Well, I always thought that they were. They just seem very different. But didn't think that they were other than humans, though. But this implies yeah. something else. So I think we have to keep reading before I even get the numbers because I'm not convinced that they didn't die off in the flood. Well, I don't think that the purpose of the flood, it doesn't say it was to wipe out the Nephilim. I mean, the it's, whole uh, corrupt, the entire humanity was so violent and corrupt. And morally, evil. yeah, spiritually and morally. But that's happening now, too. So those, whatever. The days of Noah. Doesn't doesn't Jesus tell us about the, like, yeah. like in the days of Noah? Yep, we're returning. We're here already. But it seems like the flood was more than just killing off evil people. Well, let's keep reading. Well, let's just... I think it, it'll tell us why. Yeah. All right. So we covered the the sons of God, the Nephilim, and uh, you know, I, I understand there are different views about that. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, I'm just we're trying to see what the Bible actually says and and what they intended to convey, and I think that's what it that's what it says and that's what it means. And uh, while we don't fully understand how an angel could mate with a human, if they can eat uh -huh. food. And maybe they go to the bathroom. I mean, they're getting pretty close. Well, to, the thing to is, if you're, if you're impersonating <laughs> humans in a human body, in a human form, then genetic. Well, uh, I wouldn't say impersonating. Content. Maybe that's just, it's like when you go scuba diving, you got to put on the scuba gear. It doesn't mean you're impersonating a fish or anything, but you got, you got to put on certain garments to 
inhabit the other realm, which is the underwater so realm. My question is, how does angel DNA and human DNA are able to do their thing? I if it's DNA, I mean, DNA is one of these modern scientific uh, things well, they tell us about. Is that even a real thing? But, uh, you know, seed, I would use the word seed. Okay, even seed. Which is gen, is which is gen in Greek. Gen, we get the word genetics from the Greek word for seed. And sperma, sperma is offspring and, and seed. So um, some kind of life force. Oh, oh, there's one more verse we better look at. Um, uh, the one about uh, Matthew, Matthew uh, 22, verse 30. Yeah, for in resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. So that's talking about in context. That's um, uh, who you know. The, the, this people ask Jesus, whose um, whose wife is this going to be after the resurrection? And Jesus says, basically, you know, hey, after the resurrection, no one's getting married because the angels don't get married. But see, like angel, that but implies a lot of stuff too, because it's like, okay, if angels don't get to have wives or whatever, and they're hanging out by themselves in heaven. Aren't wouldn't they be tempted then to want earthly women? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's the problem. They, there's no women up in heaven, so they're yeah. like, "Hey, that looks pretty good down there." <laughs> yeah, so it's like, why? Why is that marriage? Yeah. Only special How come they're that? having all the fun? You know, exactly. <laughs> so this verse doesn't sound all that fun to me either. But people, people will say, "Oh, angels can't have sex because that's what it said." Well, it doesn't really say that. It says they don't get marriage. Marriage is kind of a uh, you know. The, and, and 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 the thing is, if you're if, if there's if you have a race of immortal beings, they don't need to reproduce, they don't die, right? So they don't need to repopulate. So then how, how? They don't die off. Yeah, but but it says angels in heaven, right? So when angels come to earth, they have more of a human type body, right? But when they're in heaven, maybe they have a slightly different body. Um, so why would so maybe, they need those parts up in heaven if they never use it? Like maybe they don't have them in heaven. I don't know. I mean, but when they come to Earth, maybe there's just something about this realm of Earth that they need. Uh, they need to breathe oxygen. You know, they need to eat food. Okay, so then it becomes seed of man against man. Though it doesn't become angelic. Well, they're not fully. They're not. Uh, but they're still. Onto, they're still angels, though. It's not like they're not angels so they're like, anymore. So they're it's like, like well, if I go scuba diving, I'm still a human being, but I'm underwater breathing. You know what I mean? You know. Um, yeah, but it's the seed. How can you create angelic seed if they never had it? And then maybe so they did have. It. Maybe they do have it. You know, maybe they have the capacity to to um, fertilize an egg. Apparently. Well, maybe yeah. there's a different way to do it. You know, you, you hear about these alien stories, right? They're always trying to create hybrids. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know. I mean, but this is a very common theme and we see it all the time. And, uh, you know, the, the, in, in fact, there's this thing called the, the incub incubus, the incubi. And I've, yeah. I've talked to, I know, I know a woman who uh, told me a story. She lived in a dormitory with a bunch of other women and she said, she literally said, like, they were continually being raped by demons. <laughs> and I, I don't even know what that means. Like, I'm like, uh -huh. can you explain that? <laughs> 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 She's just like, yeah, we're, you know, we're getting raped by demons all the time. <laughs> I have heard about stories like that, but those are always like in their dreams or spiritual way that. Yeah, they're kind of like half asleep. Yeah, but they're like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'll try to dig into that more but uh, you know there's a lot of strange things to hear about yeah um, okay um, so let's read five and you know there there's this thing and uh now i shouldn't talk about it too much but uh, this i found this document online written it was by people in alistair crowley's group you know from like yeah. 100 120 years ago and and in that document it was a memo it was an internal memo that i don't think was supposed to be online but i found it and I put it on uh, a certain video platform, and they and they shut my whole channel down right after I put oh. that up there. Wow. And it was about um, it was a they used what was, they used the word affinity. They were talking very casually about people having uh, children with affinities. Affinities? You mean another? I think affinity yeah. kind of means like entity, doesn't it? I don't, yeah. Um, and they were very casual and open about it, like, oh yeah, these people have children uh, with aff affinities. Um, and that was like 120 years ago. And then for some reason, they decided to, 
shut my channel down right after I put made that video. Um, you struck a nerve. So I don't know. Maybe uh, <laughs> let's not do that here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, believe any of that. <laughs> well, today everything is possible. So maybe that's another like hidden alien race that they keep talking about. The reason why this topic is sort of interesting to me is because there's a lot of Christians and non-Christians talking about the whole realm of Nephilims and giants and aliens. They're all kind of lumping that topic together and they're claiming yeah. that something's going to return in the future. Well, I mean, the Bible tells us that God op God opens the abyss to let them out. They don't escape from the... There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. We don't need to be afraid of this stuff. It's um, God lets them out. I think it already happened, to be honest. Um, but uh, that's why things have gone so crazy the last few years. It's just basically oh, yeah. deceiving demons. The way I see it is deceiving demons get let, let out of the abyss and... Um, deceive people that and it's a part of a judgment you know it, it deceives the ungodly people into destroying themselves uh and it's it's a judgment you know yeah like you see all throughout time, the old testament you know pestilence is, like very severe judgment it's false not signs and wonders are these uh, narratives the deceptive narratives that they tell us through the mass media but you're not supposed to talk about that so again i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> just kidding you two okay so let's read five through eight if somehow this this podcast doesn't make it on youtube we're gonna have to find alternative <laughs> links well don't you have alternative well you can't talk about that either but uh i think there's alternative you do have a uh alternative it'll be on my platforms. site yeah i use bitshoot as my alternative channel so i don't I think can... you can say that word <laughs> okay no. sorry youtube all it's right, verse so you, verse five. Yeah, verse five. That uh, was probably Yahweh there. That the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and mm -hmm. that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was continually only evil, as it is today. I mean, that's a pretty hardcore statement, and also it's. Um, so I think that's the reason. So notice he it goes back to uh, man. Yeah, right? he's talking about. Um, Verse Not five. the wickedness of angels, but man. Yeah, because man became corrupted, and man was probably a willing, and men, men and women were willing participants. Fathers may have kind of pimped out their daughters to these creatures. Oh, I'm you sure know what I mean? they did, because they probably um, got wealth or something out of it. Yeah, and you know, the extra biblical literature says it kind of fills in the blanks, and maybe it's based on real, you know, real, or maybe it's legendary. Who knows? That that's why, yeah, you know, it's important. See, we don't need extra biblical li uh, literature to have this angelic view, right? We don't need it. Just the Bible itself talks about this. Honestly, um, I've never even tried to read the other stuff because I thought the Bible should explain everything within the the whole books you know and remember the uh the the um the the descendants of cain were they had all this technology and stuff right and and this says in verse one genesis 6 verse one this whole story begins when people begin to multiply yeah so it doesn't say exactly what year it was or but it just means when you know people were having children so it it could have been happening throughout the days of Cain and his descendants, and that's where this technology came from. So even just looking at the Bible, we do get this connection between the uh, when the angels were coming to Earth, then also this line of Cain, that Cain's descendants were creating cities, and they had metal and weapons and musical instruments yeah, and uh, makeup, makeup. Cain, the angels probably went after Cain's children yeah 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 because they were all about themselves it was all about yeah. man becoming see man wants to become a god right mm -hmm. they want to upgrade we want to upgrade ourselves and uh, we don't want to just be we don't want to be humbly obedient to god and let god take care of us no we gotta we gotta take a shortcut and and uh upgrade ourselves you know that's and it was like do. probably happening over time. Like I always thought it was just like a one-time event, but I think no, no, it, it doesn't say that. Yeah. And across generations. Yeah, yeah. According to the Bible, it's pretty. It doesn't give us all the uh, exact details, but it kind of gives us the nature of the 
event but this verse five i mean yeah i mean and and jesus does say later on you know that the days of noah well noah was mentioned right before genesis 6 and then we get this story and then noah's comes back again later in, in so verse like 9 you were saying about the 120 years like if if it meant like up to the flood uh, i don't think so because they lived a long long time all of the descendants they did yeah, so the 120 years wouldn't make sense if it's referring just before the flood. Uh, and then the way is like, uh, my spirit will not always strive with man, for he is flesh. We're still flesh. Maybe that's why he shortened it. Yeah, I think the shortening is kind of part of the, um, it, it almost feels like that verse 3 should come after verse 5 somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? It seems to be part of the uh, the punishment or something. There aren't any you know. mistakes here, so there must have been a purpose. No, exactly. Yeah, there's a reason for it. Yeah. And uh, it's just puzzle. It's just somehow, sometimes it's difficult for us to uh, to follow it. But uh, I, th I think it's related, at least. Even though it's placed up there, I think it's related to this punishment. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. Every intent of the, of the thoughts of his heart was continually only evil. See, not, now, I don't think the flood cured that problem. No, we're still. And what, what what's the solution to that problem of the the wickedness uh, of our hearts? Well, it only gets redeemed by Christ. Our yeah, that's the final. That's the solution, right? Yeah, that's the real solution. So the flood, um, you know, it didn't. It wasn't the <laughs> ultimate final solution, right? To to all the mankind's problems, it was. Uh, you know, maybe a, a temporary. Maybe it was a ne a necessary measure, a temporary measure. A, a sign of uh, God's power and judgment. He could, and he kind of un uncreates the world. You know, the world. We'll get. We'll get that in uh, verse nine. I guess we can talk more about the flood itself. I just made another connection, um, though, with the flood. That's the baptism of the earth, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, and it, well, it's also a return to the original chaos because uh -huh. you know the 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 earth kind of started in this formless void. This, the waters of chaos and uncreated world, the abyss, and it's all connected. And then the world is kind of uncreated again. It's like a fresh start. We're going to start again. And then Noah is kind of like a new Adam type figure. We're going to start well, again. I, I We're think gonna, the history you know. in this chapter probably is connected to why we get baptized before Christ. Uh, it's kind of like a cleansing in a way. Of our spirit. Yeah, there is. Yeah, the earth was cleansed from all yeah. this evil and corruption, for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's a good point. And, and there may be some references to that as well uh, in the New Testament, comparing baptism yeah. and the flood. Um, all right, verse 6. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. Now we get a bit of uh, emotion coming from God, right? Yeah. Um, but just yeah. think about this. He's like he regretted making people. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that sad? Like, because everything he made every day, he would say, "Oh, it was good." Like he's very happy with his work. And then when he's all throughout, like one thing tainted everything, and now he's like, "Ah." Oh. I mean, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> and so, so the Lord said, "I will destroy man." whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. He was going to go things. On. Yeah, and the birds of the sky. For I'm sorry that I have made them, but Noah but, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So if Noah didn't find grace, we all would have been toast that day. Yeah, yeah, basically. And uh, I think, you know, Noah's probably not perfect necessarily, but he was. He had faith probably. Um, you know, he... he uh, he loved God. He he obeyed. God. You know, he knew God. Um, he wasn't just going. He wasn't one of these wicked, unrighteous people just doing his own thing. And, uh, and he was obedient. We, we see by his work. Yeah, we see by his works that he just obeyed God. God told him to build this big boat, and he's like, okay. And then mm -hmm. he spends many years doing it. So you know, he just he just obeyed. You know, he believed God. So yeah, we find this total judgment. So this is kind of like an end times typology, right? Um, uh, you know, many people will be destroyed. This book is so important because all the stuff that goes on, like the pride 
stuff that you know like because well, all this is showing that he took not only regretted all the stuff that man was doing and it was about to wipe everybody out including noah but he, you know he found grace that judgment was going to be severe and he like all the stuff that today that goes on nobody has that fear of god they don't fear that judgment can actually take place they kind of make fun of the flood they don't even think that actually happened all the stuff, you know, taking God's rainbow, they turned that into something perverted. But in throughout the whole book, this this actual event, the flood, kind of showcased God's power over the earth and everybody in it, that he will take judgment. And I think that's what's going to happen. That's ac actually what is described in the book of Revelation, the judgment again, but now with fire instead of flood. So I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Should show fear. Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, uh, what's, what's the verse? Um uh, yeah, I mean, and Jesus says they were eating and drinking and marrying, given in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Yeah. For for, for as in those days before the flood, there you know, for and it says for as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. What's the verse? uh 24 37 matthew 24 37 and 38 as well so maybe just go to yeah 24th go scroll down to third uh 37 concerning that day and hour no one knows not even the angels of heaven but my father only so we still don't know we, we really don't know nope. as were the days of noah so will be the coming of the son of man for in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Now, this is interesting. Yeah, so marrying and giving in marriage. And we also have this marrying language with the angels marrying human females. Right. right? And they're giving in marriage. But but also, I think the main point of this, I think, is that the, you know, the son of God, Jesus will return. It'll be a surprise to people. That's probably the main point. Yeah. A lot of people want to, but, but maybe there's also a connection between the evil. It'll be evil, uh, you know, before he also, returns. Yeah. It's also relaying the story of the wicked will die and only the selected few of Noah and his family were in the ark protected. So it's kind of making a reference here, like, until the day the Noah entered the ark. So everything right to the last moment, because some he was protected in the ark while everybody else was... Uh, Everyone else is partying and having a good yeah. time. They're eating and drinking. They were just, you know, it was just uh, party time. They were going to uh, concerts, <laughs> yeah. and, and and just and you know just having a good old time, living their, their earthly life, uh, their earthly lives. And then um, there's a um, let's see here, uh, two Peter. In fact, two Peter two five. Go to two Peter two two Peter chapter two. The whole chapter, the whole chapter. So we just looked at verse four, right? For if God did not spare the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in chains of darkness to be kept for judgment, and if he did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. So they were ungodly people. Yeah. The judgment. The judgment. And the judgment comes in different ways, even pestilence, plague. That's in the Old Testament all the time. God sent a pestilence to kill the ungodly Israelites many, many, many times. Um, well, God the, sends these judgments. Yeah, and the whole book of Revelation, like people talk, a lot of Christians talk about the book of Revelation, that like they're going to have to go through the judgment or some, you know, so that to me, it's all judgment against the wicked. Yeah, against yeah, it is. Righteous. That's what Revelation 9 says, yeah. But right. there's then there's tribulation against the uh, Christians. Tribulation yeah, coming from the beast, the satanic kingdom. Yeah, was that right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, but this is judgment against the ungodly, and then he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. But I and, think uh, that God is going to give us an ark as well, because it's so yeah. That's that's the uh, that's the salvation is the ark. Yeah. That's the new ex the, the new Exodus kind of thing. Um, but we still go through uh, tribulation and maybe killed the beast that comes out of the abyss. In fact, uh, Revelation eleven. 
um, no, kills, the two, it. kills the two witnesses. We're, we're both going to be killed because the name yeah. of this is uh, Two Witnesses. And it says yeah, the beast exactly. comes out of the abyss to kill the two witnesses. <laughs> but oh, we're yeah. not literally the two witnesses. No. You know, I, I was, uh, there was, there used to be this channel and these two, there was these two guys, they literally claimed to be the two witnesses. Oh, you can't. Yeah. And they, they asked me to be on their show and I looked into their channel. I was like, there's no way I'm going on that show. These guys are nut jobs, <laughs> man. No, the, two <laughs> witnesses, the real two witnesses, they have a specific per, uh, mission. I think it's the whole church, the whole, the whole. Yeah, the real, well, the real church. I do too, but because it in the book of Revelation, it talks initially talks about the seven churches, and two of them were going to be kept out of trouble, and I don't, you know, and then later on it talks about two candlesticks and two olive trees, and they already told you what the meaning of the olive trees were and what the meaning of the two candlesticks, which represents the two churches. So out of those seven, the two churches are going to be the witnesses. And then I guess the Israelite group, the two olive trees, will be part of that too. So I think it's a whole group of people, not just too little. But it could be both. It could be a certain time frame for like witness to God, like actual churches and um, part of the Israelite group witnessing for God and then maybe at the very very end it could also mean the two literal people because the whole world watches them and then they die you know in Jerusalem so how can you have that many people in Jerusalem be witnesses you know but that's well we could talk about that another yeah. time we exactly. could go through we Let's should really go, go through, through revelation slide. at some point <laughs> yeah maybe after yeah. Genesis, I think we should try to jump ahead and do Revelation if we can. I'd like that. Yeah, maybe because yeah. uh, we Just may not have we live in those time. times now. Yeah. Because we're in the days of Noah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So, so where are we at now? Time? Oh, we got the flood story already? Okay. All right. You, you okay? Should we continue? Yep. These are the uh, generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God. Kind of like Enoch. Now Noah is a descendant of Enoch. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. Okay. Now notice it doesn't say that his sons were righteous, actually. Right. Right? Although Shem seems to be okay. Um, Ham, it turns out, we're going to find out he's unrighteous. Ham is somewhat evil. Uh, but we're going to find out later. Point they must have been righteous to get on the ark. No, not necessarily. It, it, it's, Think he, he would allow uh, it? No, it doesn't say that. It says uh, Noah. Only Noah was righteous. So that means but, everyone else could be wicked? Yeah, Think yeah. Because um, it's like, uh, you know, because Noah was righteous. So, I mean, there's no point of just having Noah alone on the ark because then mm -hmm. he's going to die. And, you know, I yeah. mean, so it's like, um, okay, Noah's righteous and we'll let him take his family with him. Regardless well, of their what unrighteous, what was the point righteous. of the flood to wipe out all the wickedness? If Noah's descendants were going to start the same process all over again, well, the point was not to eliminate wickedness from the earth. What was the point? Well, maybe it tells us. I think it just told us, didn't it? Um, let's see here. It says uh, verse seven. So the Lord said, "I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land." Um, for I am sorry that I have made them. Okay. That's why. <laughs> he saw the wickedness of man was great, and he regretted that he made people. So he was just mad? And and I'm sorry that I've made them. He's going to uncreate them. He's going to wipe them all out. He's like, oops, this so is not going mad. well. <laughs> well, it was not to get rid of wickedness. <laughs> or I thought this whole story was that because of the Nephilim mixing with humans, to every... Everybody was corrupt, like genetically. Yeah, that's a big part of it, sure. And I then think. Noah was the only one that wasn't corrupt. Not um, necessarily. He, I mean, it, it doesn't say that. I mean, so, so like you're saying Noah was the only genetically pure, the only yeah, pure otherwise, blood. Otherwise, but no, it was a moral, but he also had a good heart. His heart was mm -hmm. in the right place. It's not you could have an evil per person so, who's genetically pure blood and a pure blooded person can still be evil. I think the way I initially was understanding this it wasn't about 
the wickedness of man so much like it'll still continue they'll still continue sinning but that he was trying to start over with a clean race of, yeah yeah it's you know, a new adam it's he's given is making a fresh start but we're going to find out so we're not really told yet what's going to happen after the flood but noah gets drunk and passes out naked right after the flood so it he's not see they're all kind of like typologies of adam noah abraham david but they're not perfect they're not and jesus is the real new adam you know the the perfect verse 11 um, are we there already verse 11 yeah yeah, yeah. okay so now the, the earth was corrupt the earth okay so we're, we're, gonna, we're still got more we got new information coming coming in still then the earth was corrupt before god and filled with violence yeah okay that kind of relates to what the the wickedness of man and all that stuff no, it probably does have a lot to do with these. Uh, I mean, obviously, right? If you have all these Nephilim and these are the hybrids and they're just tyrants and evil and everyone's selfish and just, you know, going crazy, then yeah, that kind of fits into this. It's a, But it's a very general statement, right? We're not getting all the details. Um, but it kind of sounds like it is now, though, doesn't it, right? The earth was corrupt yeah, for exactly. God and filled with violence. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things... Uh, there's a lot. I mean, this is exactly what's going on today, actually. Yeah, um, without even telling the angelic story, it looks just like today. The earth yeah, was corrupt before yeah, it filled with violence. Yeah. God looked down the earth and saw it was corrupt, and for all flesh had corrupted huh. ways on the earth. It's just like now. Yeah, and that's you know, it could be a physical thing, could be genetic, but it's also the heart, the 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 and thoughts yeah. and what does it say up there? Um, verse five, the Every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Isn't that still today? You see, the heart is always kind of placed above genetics almost. You know, the heart is a real important thing. It's like, and that and the word in Hebrew is kind of you can it's almost untranslatable, but it's like heart, mind, our will, our intentions, our psyche, our our spirit, or whatever, our soul, are the ens the essence of who we are was corrupt um we lost our way but that yeah. kind of seems like it was always that way even with adam and eve forward so like the only reason why uh, it's worse they repented people they repented i think um yeah yeah see these people were unrepentant they did not humble themselves before the god before uh, god and see i think the problem these days is that everyone's afraid of the uh, the beast and we're yeah we're supposed to fear god exactly. we're not supposed to be afraid of the the uh yeah. satanic uh, world i think world that's world. intentional propaganda is to create that fear a lot that, of fear porn i don't yeah. even i can't watch that stuff anymore i know it's very it's, hard um, and it does yeah. corrupt your mind even the best of us i think it really does corrupt. yeah and there's a way to respond to the uh and i'm learning this i kind of learned it the hard way there's a, there's a way to respond as a Christian to the um, tyranny and persecution and and even the tribulation, and well, it's not what you see in most of these uh, videos and stuff. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. So um, okay, so um, where are we in their corruption? Let's read that part again. That's a great verse. God looked on the earth and saw that it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Okay, so again, they were telling us why the flood happened, right? So mm -hmm. God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. So that's kind of, you know, he's explaining um, to Noah why the flood is going to come. But this violence um, is going to be, it filled with violence, is going to happen now. Because uh, later on in the Bible, it does talk about how men hearts become cold and... Um, I forgot the verse. Yeah, yeah. Matthew 24. Yeah, probably. so um, that's only going to lead to more violence and craziness like we've never seen. Like all the stuff, you know, with the rioting and the stuff that we've seen recently, I think that's going to be a commonplace coming down. Well, yeah, it's already begun, really. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, and, and again, it kind of comes from the heart really it begins there and then the actions we take after that whether it's 
whether it's mating with angels or creating hybrids or whatever transformation, we try to transform humanity into something else. It kind of stems from our wicked hearts, I think. So none of these um, people could have been transformed and repented? Like if they didn't want to, they didn't want to repent. They chose not to repent. Now I will destroy them with the earth. Um, and, and also the earth was corrupt as well. So, I mean, I don't want to read, I'm kind of conservative. I don't, you know, people will say that, oh, the entire, you know, all living things were genetically modified. Um, I don't know if that's what it's saying necessarily. Um, but then why but baby, yeah. everything like plant life, all life, sea life, bird life, every life was under the flood because because that was all for us that was you know adam's job was to take care of the earth uh yeah, kind of be like a, a gardener and, and a zookeeper and um he's, but he's if, just, they, if yeah. they weren't corrupt if you didn't have corrupt sea life they all go together i think it's like the the whole package was like animals and human beings taking care of the animals was kind of part of the whole plan and so if you're going to get rid of the people, the people are wicked. Well, then who's going to take care of the animals and the plants and all that stuff? Who's going to be the gardener of the garden? Then why? Then we don't need a garden yet, anymore. Because all I have to be replanted. So one righteous, yeah, one righteous person. And it, it, Noah's kind of a typology of Christ, right? Yeah. And as the new Adam, he's like, okay, this one righteous person. Because you know Jesus is the one righteous uh, person who fulfilled uh the covenants maybe he had to kill everything because that was the only way to drown out all the people well it wasn't i don't know it wasn't all that practical necessarily it's more of a you know he i mean he wiped out sodom and gomorrah but there were yeah, still he, he wicked cities all and, the animals and all the plants because noah's was going to take uh yeah of each kind right in the well, let's, let's keep reading yeah um i will destroy the earth Make an ark of cypress wood for yourself. Make rooms on the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you must make it. The length of the ark will be 300 cubits, the width of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Make an op opening one cubit below the top of the ark all around, and you must set the door of the ark on the side. Make it with a lower, a second, and a third story. I'll, I will bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherever there is the breath of life under heaven, and everything that is on the earth will die. Next year. <laughs> He's like really pissed off. Um, yeah. Yeah. So everything had to die except those in the ark, which obviously means salvation, like Christ, like you said. So everybody that's in the ark will live, everybody outside the ark will die. And that's baptism in christ basically um i wanted to show you what cubit because i looked that up and i could see how long it was um so roughly i think it says that the noah arc was 300 cubits uh width was 50 cubits and height 30 cubits um and what is a cubit so it's something like a measurement the way they the way they used to do it was something from your elbow to your hand measurement. And there's like three different kinds. So roughly they said like the Hebrew was about 17.5 inches and an Egyptian was 20.6 inches. So somewhere between 17 to 20 inches is one cubit. And I think they figured out. So how big was the arc? Is this the place that has a, they have like an arc there? Like a like a, I, uh, they have an arc at this arc encounter. The website you're looking at, I think they actually have an arc there. You can go look at, not the real one, but uh, oh, a replica. You mean like, oh, I yeah. This this really website you're looking that. at is called the Ark Encounter. Yeah, so the problem so they must have a replica. I think there's a replica there. You can go and kind of go on the arc in their arc. But it it does yeah. say it was like 300 cubits by 50 cubits. I think somewhere in here, I thought it said it in what, how many inches that actually might have been. Um, the whole thing. Yeah, they probably have it there. They must, because uh, they have a... I guess I lost it. So... No, that's all right. A big boat. It's pretty big, yeah. And um, so where, what verse were we on here? Um, I'll die 18, verse 18. 
So everything's going to die except uh so but I will establish but but I will establish my covenant with you. So you notice so like he's kind of like a new Adam. Yeah. And I think there was a covenant with Adam as well like I will you know it's like you're going to represent me on earth now. So this this topic of covenant is all throughout the Bible and we're in the new covenant now. There was the well, old the covenant, covenant um, keeps getting updated. You know, so like now we're in yeah. There's the quite a few yeah. Christ, who is our exactly? Ark. Yes, exactly. Um, you must go into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. Bring every living thing of all flesh, two of every kind, into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, two of every kind, a bird of every kind of animal and of every kind of creeping thing on the earth will come to you to be kept alive. Also take with you of every kind of food that is eaten and gather it to yourself and it will be for food for you and for them. Did, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. So that's a righteous person right there. Yeah. You know, he had faith. He had faith, but he also um, put his faith into action his actions demonstrated his faith. And um, so this is kind of a new creation. You know, it's, it's almost like Genesis 1 in a way. Yeah. But the, the stuff has already been created, so he just kind of preserves it on the boat and destroys everything else. It's kind of a new, it's a new covenant. It's, this is, at the time, this was the new covenant, really. It almost seems yeah. like, right? I will. In, in fact, doesn't it say that? What does it say? I will establish my covenant with you. And um, that covenant was a rainbow which will it, it'll get well, that's a sign that's a sign of the covenant yeah. we'll get that but I, th I will establish my covenant with you establish right i will establish my covenant with you and um yeah so he's just kind of starting over he, he established his covenant with adam and um and we see and what he, happened it, 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 they it, failed they now they always failed right the, the the old covenant with the mosaic sinai covenant they fa the israelites failed they failed and completely. Noah, at this point, was the only one that... that and he fails, too. They definitely. all fail. Yeah. They all fail. All human be human beings cannot keep their side of the covenant. Yeah. The and agreement. It's like a contract, right? It's like a work contract or something, yeah. or a marriage contract. It's like they're... Che in fact, the, the people are always compared to... Uh, they're whoring after other gods. They're they're uh, adulterers. They're, 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 they're always... Uh, you know, it's it's like in a marriage relationship that you know they're, they're unfaithful, unfaithful, right? We're supposed to have faith, but the people are always unfaithful to God. Yeah, because in the beginning, He's kind of given them commands, and nobody follows. They all do their own thing. And then ultimately, God decides it's like no matter how many laws they're given, they're going to break them, and the condition <laughs> is really the heart. So, like. Is yeah. he's no longer looking at you to follow like to the letter of every law, but yeah. yeah. So this flood didn't it didn't cure just like the uh, sacrifices the <clears throat> the Old Testament sacrifices did not cure the problem of our evil hearts. Yeah, nothing did. In fact, the entire but there will be a new covenant written on our heart. You know, the the law will be written on yeah. our hearts. That's the new covenant, and we're still kind of in this in between stage where the. You know the the old world and the new the new age kind of overlap, um, but that's we're getting ahead. Well, of that's ourselves. what even Jesus said. It all came down to one law, basically love, and that if you didn't have that, then you were going to be committing all these sins all the way through, one way or another. And this love, yeah, love is what uh, transforms the heart. Yeah. So that's what I'm kind of getting from this Genesis six. I mean, there's so many. You know, if, if we only look at the genetic aspect, I think we're that's the superficial a little bit. You know, we have to look at the heart. It always the Bible. I find it always goes back to the, the the deepest levels of our heart, and who we are, and and who God is, and God has mercy on us, and God ultimately sends His Son to to die for our sins and to uh, to change our hearts. Let's just you know? hypothetically say that. They had babies with all these angels, and they were all decent, loving creatures. Would that have made any difference? They weren't supposed to. I think it was a uh, unlawful union. They, you know, they, they were interbreeding, and that's they weren't supposed to. That was the problem. Is that? Yeah, but were, let's say were, that because if it's not about corruption of genetics, 
and everybody came out like loving in the end. I think they were told not to. I think the angels were told not to do that, but they did it anyway. So that shows right, their hearts. The angels' hearts were in the wrong place as well. They were just, they were like Adam. The, the certain, yeah. not all of them, but certain angels disobeyed God's order not to do that. And I think later, the words that you gave me earlier, it was talking about the sins of the flesh when it was referring to angels. I don't know if it was in this one or not. They didn't keep their, their own estate. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't obey God. It's like like at the in fact the end of Genesis six that we just read, Noah did all that God commanded him, and that's why he's righteous. Yeah. Um, so here in the two Peter four, uh, two Peter two four. Yeah. Uh, what we already read. It said that they it sinned. Got, they sinned. Did an angel because uh, that sinned. Um, See, they're punished. They're punished as well. They they didn't become corrupt. The the angels remained angels even if they took human form briefly they they were still angels right the the yeah. hybrids were corrupted but they're so, they're still punished because they so sin only noah who was considered righteous of all of those people yeah because he obeyed god he he had yeah. faith he's like abraham he had faith and he obeyed god because he had faith there is a genetic i think yeah i definitely believe they had hybrid children but I don't think that's they would have I mean, caused a problem. It, it caused a problem in genetics, but it also caused a problem in the human heart. Yeah. It's not an either or thing. It's a both and you know, and but people were sinning, you know, people were unable to uh, have faith anymore. Or they they chose not to have faith. Kind of like now. It's kind of like now. I mean, there's wicked well, people definitely now, like unrighteous. That. Doesn't mean they're hybrids or anything, but there there may still be hybrids. And now, and then you get into the uh, now the the Bible never tells us where demons came from, and you get the uh, but there were you know the stories from the uh, old days that the people living two thousand years ago had certain beliefs about where the demons came from, and and they they came from the uh, the Nephilim, the dead because the, the, their spirits, their spirits, they had the spirit of angels, right? But bodies of men or bodies of giants, and then then when they died. There was no place for their oh, spirit you know to go. What? There was they were kind of like a uh, they're like a computer virus, you know. In in this, uh, it kind of makes um, sense because we were talking about you know the whole how do they get their body on earthly versus the angel. So this is what my thinking is now: what how the demons could have been because in their realm they're immortal, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And in our realm, they they had that physical body that would decay and yeah. die. So when that body dies, that immortality part of the angel, it's like it it, does, it has nowhere to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, yeah, so it was a uh, they weren't supposed to be doing that. Um, you know, there's not supposed to be a mixing between the angels and the humans like that. So the humans would have never been created if this didn't. If this story never happened. Well, there's there's a reason it starts off Genesis six with that story, right? Yeah. So it does give us it comes right before the flood, and I think it explains why people became so corrupt. There was basically, you could, if you want to call them angels or or fallen angels or even aliens or something, there was this. Uh, they come from a different place. Well, like alien is just a foreigner, right? Mm -hmm. So the these fallen angels came to Earth. They corrupted people, physically, uh, mentally. Uh, eth ethically, they corrupted people, and people, and I think that's where a lot of the religions come from. The other religions and the other gods and goddesses were these fallen angels. These divine beings were worshipped as gods, and that look at Hinduism. I mean, you know something about that, right? These Hindus, yeah. the Hindu gods oh, and you goddesses. Know, you know, I mean, I these were realized? probably the fallen angels originally. Yeah. I think that's what I realized that all of those stories, even like the old Greek gods and uh, Hindu gods and, you know, all these different places that had their gods. I think those were fallen angels that yeah. went to those areas and have those people worship them. So, yeah. And these, and, and they, you know, the, the wicked people in this world today and the secret societies and all that, they think the pre-flood world was, that was their utopia. Yeah. That was well, their garden of Eden. Right, where where, the, where man and God inter, you know, the the God, the gods, the small g gods, the demigods, and they thought those were the good old days. And, well, if they uh, had any, to bring that back, 
if they had any powers like, as demigods to make things happen for people, I mean, I could see why they would start worshiping them, you know, and that's, I think, what's yeah. back again. They're going to be. Well, it's, it's already come back. And, uh, it, well, it, it comes back again in the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Right away. Like they, they start rebuilding the pre flood world pretty quickly in the Bible. Um, so and, uh, and they're still they're still rebuilding it now and certain secret societies they do trace their origins back to the pre-flood world and they had all this secret knowledge and all this kind of stuff right and uh yeah i think they have superpowers yeah. and that's probably why god had to get rid of them and yeah but if you think about it noah so these eight people on the ark and we'll get into this maybe next time um yeah. we can probably stop reading now because we just finished with genesis 6 that's probably enough for today but we can but the people, the eight people on the ark, see, they all experienced the pre-flood world. They knew what that world was, and I think Noah's son Ham maybe liked the pre-flood world better than the post-flood world. And that, we'll get into that next time, I guess. But uh, we're going to see that Ham and his descendants are kind of the evil, but you think evil that bloodline. Even though, like, they might have been wicked, the sons, uh, that maybe genetically, because Noah wasn't corrupted, his sons were not going to be corrupted either, genetically. But his wife, you know, they had wives that were not yeah. related to, to them, you know, by bloodline necessarily. So, um, I mean, the, a pretty good theory, I think, that Ham's wife may have been corrupted. Um, genetic, you know, she may have had some Nephilim uh, bloodlines in her. But why Ham's would God wife. allow a hybrid to enter the ark? God allow why would God allow Satan to go into Garden of Eden? <laughs> I know, but this whole point of I know why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> why? There's a verse that explains all this. Um I have it written down somewhere because I always forget it. Um okay, here it is right here. Let me read this. This is Judges. So we're getting ahead of ourselves, but it's totally related to what we're talking about. Judges chapter three. Just go there, because it's the first couple of verses. Now, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but he's fighting. A lot of these uh, tribes they're fighting with are giant tribes. And the word gigant, the word giant is used in the Greek. And, um, I mean, these are tall dudes, right? So, <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, they're like, and they're called Rephaim. And, you know, there's something weird about these people. Now, and they're, But their hearts are evil. So, that's like a given. They're, they're sacrificing children. They're doing... Uh, they're 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 gender bending. I don't know what word you can say without sparking the you know whatever. But uh, <clears throat> so now these are the nations that the Lord left to to what to do what to test uh. those in Israel who had not experienced war in Canaan, so that later generations of the children of Israel who did not know war before might know it to teach them how to fight. So what? So what? What's it saying there? It says these are the nations that the Lord left. See, they're they're supposed to wipe out these evil people. They're supposed to yeah. wipe them out, which is almost kind of like a flood, right? There's like yeah. a, it's almost like a genocide thing going on, right? And you're supposed to wipe these people out. They're evil. Get rid of them. They're useless. They're hopeless. They're evil. Their hearts are corrupted to the core. And maybe there's some genetic things going on as well. Some bloodline stuff that causes them to be evil and unredeemable unrepentant but some of them were left so is why like to test to test israel to teach them how to fight and i think these fight these battles back then by the way i think a typology of our spiritual warfare we have to do yeah. to test them to test them so why was why did evil come back after the flood well there was eight people on the boat only one of them is declared righteous it doesn't say anything about the other people that they're righteous or not. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure some of, you know, at least uh, at least one of his sons seemed to be pretty good, pretty okay. But they're they're not perfect. And uh, even Noah, like I said, Noah got drunk and passed out naked after the flood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so something else would have made him righteous, though, not because they couldn't sin ever, because they obviously all did. Including yeah, him. yeah, but we're gonna see we're gonna see that uh, Ham and his uh, and Canaan, Canaan. Look at look at this verse we just read. Canaan was a descendant of Ham. Yeah, and all these Canaanite bloodlines are 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 giants and they're evil and they're wicked. 
and they need to be exterminated, but God left some of them alive to test the Israelites. So that's so we're test, being remember. tested. God right. let Satan into the Garden of Eden to test. See, it's Ad, it's our job. It's our job. It's Adam's job to rebuke Satan and, and to obey God instead of obeying Satan. So how does all of this relate to what's going on today? I don't know if we can say everything. We'll get the the, the video will get censored if. <laughs> well, without the this, you know, I mean, other than that, it seems like the powerful people that are ruling over us, they have some sort of symbology of, you know, the wickedness. That they, was they 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 think that these Nephilim and the fallen angels are the good guys, and Satan yeah. is the good guy as well for opening our eyes and. But why you know, isn't God liberating us? Out? I guess that's my question. Why? Well, He will. He will. He will. It's promised yeah, that later. He will. Like later. why not immediate judgment? Like why? Why? Why have all these six thousand years of history? You know, I mean, it's just part of the process. It's like this. Uh, why did it take four thousand years for uh, Jesus to appear on the scene? Why have David be king and then Solomon just uh, kind of ruins it all? Um, why have Abraham, like, why not just, why, why was Abraham, Abraham? And why didn't, why didn't he just do the, the Jesus, uh, plan then? You know what I mean? Why wasn't Noah? Why wasn't, why didn't Christ come instead of Noah? You know what I mean? They're like typologies, I think. And, and it just keeps building and well, building. It's also like telling and, uh, stories that no man could ever achieve. Without, you know, having salvation. Of yeah. Him. Like, yeah. So we get this Noah who seems like a savior almost, you know, he's going to yeah. save the world, right? He saved humanity. He saved all the animals uh, because, because he obeyed God. But he didn't he got, the saving. He he was given an ark. As he obeyed God. He yeah. obeyed God. So, so he, he, he took part in this. He, you know, if Noah would have said, nah. I don't feel like building the boat today. Mm. I don't think I'm going to do that. Well, then you <laughs> then we all would have been toast. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it is it is a typology that is like God was Christ in this situation, and the ark was the protection plan. So, like, today, Christ is our ark. Yeah, yeah. Protecting yeah. us. Yeah, in, no, in Moses. Moses even started out on an ark. They call that little boat he was on uh, an ark, you know, um, when he was a well, baby. Moses yeah. also had a plan for salvation for his people. For the Yeah, yeah. And, and he's a and typology. And they all failed, you know. They all failed. All the people yeah. failed. That's the big part of the Bible story, I think, is he, the failure of humanity, but the grace of God, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. That we're all pretty much failures till we get to the very end, and there's that's just we're just broken people. There's no there's yeah, no way yeah. to get perfect because people always say, you know, like you're trying to be uh, like if you are a believer, you're somehow like perfect, but in fact, that's not what's happening. Is that he's taking all the imperfect people and bringing him to himself. So it's not like, you know, how other religions, they try to follow. They think the more they uh, read their text, that the more holy they become, like, uh, in a way. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, it's, yeah. It's oh, they're becoming people. spiritual. And yeah. Perfect. yeah, it's all about me and my yeah. spiritual feeling. Yeah. Or being perfect. Yeah. Well, really, the story is saying nobody's perfect. They're all sinners. Even even in, in uh, even Paul says in one of his verses, he says, uh, I'm not perfect. Yeah, you know, I'm not perfect yet because you get all this stuff, and that people think, "Oh, you're never going to sin again," and yeah, yeah, all this stuff. But but we do. It's it's just the the thing is we don't enjoy it, and we don't deliberately go out, and we're not deliberately in in rebellion against God anymore. We've repented and we submit the baptism. Um, well, you know, it's the kind of submission stuff. part that we try to go back, even if we stray. We try it's still kind of a daily bat. Yeah, it's, we're yeah. in we're in the midst of spiritual warfare, and we have these we have this imperfect world existing at the same time. There's this, um, you know, this church, this kingdom of God is beginning. We have the Holy Spirit, but yet we still have our fleshly bodies. We'll be given new bodies. In fact, I heard someone say the other day, um, you know, our spirit gets regenerated, but our body does not. 
Not yet, not yet. Later on it does, but right now we can regenerate our, our spirit can be regenerate, but our body is still our same old body that we were born with, you know? And, yeah, uh, thank so you. So it's a spiritual thank warfare, you know, the battle of the spirit and the flesh and all that stuff is still going on. Um, but a lot of it's a test, you know, and uh, and we're still well, kind of being tested. What do you think? Think a lot of this tribulation is a test, I think. Yeah. What do you think this word fair means here? Well, it's kind of quirky there. The, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives in all which they chose. What what the heck is going on? Uh, ESV says attractive. Uh, um, probably beautiful, you know, pretty, beautiful, desirable, uh, um, pleasing, good, pleasant. Yeah. You know, in fact, that's kind of like the, uh, isn't, didn't Eve say something very similar about the fruit of the tree? Yeah, actually. Yeah. So you see, they're, they're kind of, uh, so it's this immediate thing, gratification. It's lust, happens. basically. Yeah. Th these angels fell into lust. Yeah. Essentially, it's, it's lust. It's, they're coveting. Um, where did Adam and Eve? Uh, I think stand? Edom, uh, chapter three. Yeah, I think I think uh, Eve had something, um, and she saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasing to the eyes and yeah. desirable. Ple verse six, pleasing to the eyes. See, it's a similar kind of thing, right? Sin. Yeah. So that's kind of where I think the angels had. A, see, the angels are not perfect either. They're mortal, but they're not. Uh, only God is perfect, right? So, so these angels are created beings. And I think most of them, you know, are faithful and obedient, but uh, some of them sinned just like Eve sinned here. And well, they like they're put women. In the they, they wanted women. That's why they sinned, right? They gave up their and children. I think maybe they also wanted the children, though. Maybe they knew that, oh, that yeah. you know, I think well, that was, it was like they knew the children were going to come. They wanted children. They wanted to have children. They're like, because, you know, there's something in that. Hey, hey let's make our own species but why weren't they satisfied if they lived in this angelic realm heavenly with god you mean adam and eve no the angel you can say the same thing you could say the same exact question about adam and eve right yeah right they had it all they were they, they had it they had it, the adam and eve, adam and eve had it really good yeah, but desire they were not satisfied satan i think maybe satan tempted these angels to do this i think whoever satan is wherever he came later. from you know, yeah. Satan's the, the the prince of the demons, right? Prince mm -hmm. of uh, Prince Satan. Um, I think maybe Satan. I mean, it doesn't say that, but you know, they, they were tempted. They were they were kind of encouraged. There was a, they were they were this idea came into their head somehow, and they were just like just like human. Why do we sin? Why do people sin? Why did why did uh, Adam and Eve sin? They had it all. You know, why, didn't they share why this? did Solomon, why did Solomon, Solomon was the richest and wisest and most powerful man on earth, but yet he whored after other gods. Why he, and he had a thousand wives and girlfriends. It was all women again. It was never was satisfied, woman. right? The heart is never satisfied. Mm, but human nature and angel nature too. I why guess. not just give the angels wives and children then? I mean, if that's what's going to make them happy. But because anyway, God is, decides. God created the world, uh, and and we didn't. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why you can wipe he, he, out. He sets all the, the rules. Community. He sets the rules. So I wanted to share this from last chapter because we left a couple of things open ended. Remember, we were talking about that all the names had meanings. So yeah. I got this little chart here where i guess if you follow from all the people there it says man is appointed mortal sorrow but god bless god shall come down teaching his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest i don't know i thought it was just cute but the other question yeah no no it does mean rest definitely yeah 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 so maybe they That's um, interesting. the other thing that we were talking about last time was who was around. Mm, there's no a timeline. Into, All right. Yeah. So it looks like everybody died, including Lemek, 
before the flood, except for Methuselah, the grandfather. He was the only one that got affected by and Lamech. The flood. Lamech. What about Lamech? He, got, he died before. So oh, right be before the flood, just right before. Yeah. Ah. It doesn't, According to this chart. Right. Okay, if it's correct, yeah. But maybe right. we'll come across that as we continue reading. If but does. so, yeah. So the so the stuff we just read about in Genesis one at the beginning could have happened. Uh, um, there there is an extra biblical text that talks about it happening in the days of Jared um, and Enoch. And e well, yeah, we know the book of Enoch is all about that stuff. So, but it could have began, uh, you know, at the earliest uh, generations. Basically, any time before the flood, that stuff could have started. What so stuff? it could have been going on a while. The the hybrids, the creation. Oh of hybrids. yeah, I think that definitely yeah. happened all this time. Yeah, could um, have been. I mean, we're yeah, not told, but had... you know, Jared is kind of a traditional understanding that the days of Jared and Enoch from so this maybe timeline, um, a thousand like, years, maybe they were like a couple thousand years span before a thousand the, years before the flood. Yeah. So there's quite a long time of this corruption going on. Yeah. Um, and you can see uh, Noah was what the great grandson of Enoch. Although it looks like they didn't overlap. I thought they overlapped a bit. I guess not. The other thing you see wow. how the time, uh, their lifespan is getting shorter and shorter. So like 800 years or a total of like over 900 plus years here. And then gradually yeah, after the flood, yeah. they're like even 600 years after the flood, but then they kept getting lower and lower to yeah. and was only 175. And I think, you know, I think the flood kind of changed, um, Maybe the original creation had a was a bit was different than it is now. Like the flood, um, yeah, it just may have changed a lot of things. Basically, and the other thing, uh, the question that we were talking about, like you know how Cain, where did he get his wives? Well, one thing that um, I did notice the verses in the Bible is saying that you know Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters. But they didn't mention even all the sons. It only mentioned three and really two uh, family lines of Seth and Cain, even yeah. though Adam had like other sons and other. Yeah, daughters. they had. They did. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. They're just not really part of the uh, the the genealogies. Right. So yeah. God made a point just to have Cain's gene genealogy, which ended before the flood and then Seth genealogy which continued on with Noah yeah although it's possible some of the wives of Noah's sons wives like where did they come from um that maybe they came from the line of Cain uh, yeah and I think uh in the Bible they do have like uh exact like who which wife came from where so maybe as we read to it yeah, next time we can get into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah I mean, these bloodlines, there are people who like do extensive uh, research into the bloodlines, and there are some uh, interesting uh, uh, patterns that emerge, you know. Wow, so that's a lot today. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's just then, one chapter, Genesis 6. Yeah, so it looks like it might go a little slower because the next one's going to be exciting too. That's the actual flood flood where all the waters are coming from heaven and the earth. Yeah, okay. maybe we can cover um, seven and eight, eight, maybe. Yeah. Um, let's see, maybe. You know, we'll just take it, you know, see how it goes. Yep. Um. And then Abraham's story, yeah. which I can't wait for that one too, because that's exciting stuff after that. Yeah. I'm yeah. jumping ahead. But it, it looks like we might be spending a few weeks or a couple of months on this book. But I think this is an, a very important book, though, because it, it ties in like you were reading other verses and stuff to make the connections, which you wouldn't know until you read this yeah. book. No, Genesis is really one of the most important books of the Bible, I'd say. It's very foundational to our understanding. And the New Testament writers, even the Old Testament writers, keep referring back to it. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, and, you know, and we learn 
things from, you know, it is, it is part of the Torah, right? It's the teaching and, and instruction through the narrative. So we're learning things through the narrative. So what did we uh, learn from truth. this chapter so far? <laughs> Other than that we're wicked. I mean, and God saved us. I guess that's the only. God can destroy the world and he can also uh, provide a way of a means of salvation. Yeah, an ark. Right? So like you said, uh, Jesus is our ark now. And, and we're if we're going to be in the days of Noah again, which yeah. we probably are now already, then what's our, what's the ark that we're going to get on? You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, the Exodus, which I can't wait to get to that book too, that kind of, I think, gives a lot of hope of what happens, how God took care of his people in the desert, where he had to, they were not no longer in the system. They had to be relying 100% on God in the desert. The which, mana from heaven, and they complained yeah. about it. Yeah, <laughs> and then the quail story. So yeah, I definitely think all the stuff that's happening in the Old Testament is going to really be important coming up. There's a lot of typology over and over again, right? There's creation, uh, there's rebellion, there's destruction, there's judgment, and yeah. then there's salvation. It's like this this cycle that keeps repeating itself, uh, these thematic cycles that repeat over and over and over again. Yeah, and he's giving the Old people, Testament. He's always giving the few people that make it, you know, and then they, they get yeah. the kind of life. The rest die. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. even yeah, even in that that Numbers thirteen story about the spies and the Nephilim, only those two guys, only uh, two people from the Israelites entered the Promised Land. Oh, really? Which one now? Joshua the, and Caleb. Well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But that's the you know kind of relates to what we talked about the Nephilim after the flood. Yeah. So uh, I think I think a lot of our questions, you know, I always think of things after we finish. I always think of things over the next week that I forgot I to know. mention, or <laughs> new ideas or whatever. But uh, yeah. I think as we go, we still have some unsolved questions. I'm sure we'll uh, maybe uh, maybe those answers will come as we continue to read. Yeah, the unsolved question for now is still bugging me about the angel and humans having babies. So I don't know. Well, how that's that. bugged everybody for the last <laughs> couple thousand years, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, the problem is we don't know much about the angels. Like, it's not like we see them, you know, all the time. And so we don't know what they really are. Maybe right. some people, I know some people claim to see angels. I don't know. Maybe I have, but it, if I, if there, there was something in my life where it, possibly I had a, there was an angel, but it looked like a human, a female, actually. Um, she so they can, some, some people have told me, I've told this, I won't get into it, but I've told this story to Christians and they'd be like, dude, that was an angel. And really? Like, That's crazy, man. And it was like, maybe you never know. Well, now I'm um, curious what this nah, I know, angel I look like. <laughs> a, free, a woman. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, so it's like, um, you know, we don't know. And then, what's that verse? Uh, you, you know, be, be courteous to strangers because it may be a, an angel, right? There, there, there's a verse that talks courteous about to that. them, but it didn't say to sleep with them. So I still. I don't know. We'll leave that. I didn't sleep with her. <laughs> no. But I mean, like. She wouldn't let me. But... They did in the days of Noah to come in the form of humans. Yeah, that was a sin. And they're put in the abyss. Yeah. They're put in prison. They weren't supposed to do that. That's the thing. Right. They were not supposed to do that. They sinned. And they paid for it. Everybody did. Okay. So next time we'll do the flood flood. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate all the Yep, All same right. to you. All Bye. Right. Bye-bye.